Hello world, I'm Nick, and in this video we're going to look at regular expressions in C Sharp. Regular expressions are an integral part of programming in general, and I'm going to show you how you can use them in C Sharp. But before we get into that, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel to make sure that you get all the latest .NET content. So regular expressions, I find myself using these near on daily, and they're so important in fact that I thought I'd make a video on them. So uh, let's start off by talking about what regular expressions are. So the use case for regular expressions is when you're looking to extract text based on a consistent pattern. So a lot of the text that we pass using code has a pattern. It could be an invoice ID that starts with a specific letter. It could be a postcode which has a specific format for the country that you're working in. It could be a social security or national insurance code. We write software programs all the time that need to extract these kinds of data. And so using regular expressions, we can define a specific pattern for the thing we want to extract and have our code look for those patterns and extract them. But not only extract them, also perform other actions such as replacing the values that are found. Regular expression has its own syntax and it can get quite complicated. So I wouldn't normally expect people to learn them off by heart. There are maybe some basic expressions that you might learn, but more often than not, you're gonna look these up. And for this demo, I'm essentially going to work on two use cases. I'm going to use regular expressions to find a zip code for the US. And then I'm gonna make a second regular expression, or regex as it's often referred to, which will detect a Visa credit card number. And then it will mask the credit card details for the user that's inputted the data. So let's get into it. So when we're working with regular expressions, we often have to use what's called a regular expression validator. And that is simply a way to test the regular expressions that we're using to make sure that we're actually extracting the things we're expecting to. Here's an example on a site that I use all the time. It's called regexa.com and I've just opened up the page and this is their default regular expression example. For the text, they're essentially just using a passage of text which outlines the history and the use case for regexa and they've got this regular expression at the top. So what they're actually doing here is they're using a regular expression to look for any words which have a capital letter. So we can see here we've got what's called a capturing group. And again, you're not expected to learn these off by heart. You can use tools like this to work out the best way to write regular expressions. And there's a whole host of information that people have written on the internet which explain the various ways to capture things with regex. As it explains here, it groups multiple tokens together, tokens being characters or items in the text. And for this capture group, we're saying that it needs to be a group of letters A to Z, specifically uppercase letters. Then we also have a slash W, which is a regex term for word. It's a way of saying this also should be a word. And then we follow that with a plus quantifier, which says, I want you to match one or more of these. So if we took the last bit away and we said just look for A to Z, then it will just look for single occurrences of a capital letter or an uppercase character in the text. So say I wanted to write something on the fly and I had, for example, say an invoice and I knew it always started with INV and then had a dash and a bunch of numbers. So I could use this consistent pattern to detect an invoice ID in this text. I can use the literal text, INV. That's already picked up the uppercase INV that I've got. Put in the dash. This is what always follows the INV in my use case. And then I can put a grouping in and say zero to nine. Now at the moment, that's only picked up one number. Uh, and it's important to note that this is found in the order that I've specified. So I'm specifying that the word that I'm looking for should start with INV dash and then a number between zero and nine. Now I could then say that there is just multiple numbers afterwards, in which case I would put the plus sign, but I could also be very specific and say that it's followed by one, two, three, four, five, six numbers. So to do this, I could put some curly braces, for example, and say six, and that actually matches. So somewhere else in the text, if I was to put something similar, you can see that has actually matched. So what we're gonna do in C Sharp is use a regex expression in our C-sharp code to find a list of matches or to perform a replacement on the first match that we find. So the first regex I wanna use as a demo is for US zip codes. So we can see here, this is a regex that I actually found online for US zip codes. 
Uh, regex is really cool in the sense that it gives you a bit of an idea what each element in the expression means. Well, then to test this out, I could say, hey, I'm Nick, and I'm currently living in 90210. And you can see 90210, very famous zip code, has been detected. And I can keep typing after that, and it will still detect it from the start. So how can we then use this in C-sharp? Well, I'm going to copy this regex, and then I'll open up my demo console application. I'm just going to put that regex up here so I don't forget it. And we're ready to make an application with some regex. So what I'm going to do is create a console app which requests some prompt from the user. So it's going to ask the user to type in some text. Then the console app will use regular expression to find a postcode, or sorry, a zip code, as it's done in the States, in that text, and it will return it to the user. So I'm going to start this off by saying console.writeline. And so this is going to ask the user to please enter text. And then the text is equal to console.readline. So that will, from a console app perspective, take the result of the item that is, or the text that is written onto the buffer. So we'll just give that a little test. If I just run that, we should see we've got our console window and it just says, please enter text. I enter something and that's the end of the application because there's nothing else to enter. So this text will be what the user entered and I want to do the regex on that text. First of all, I want to create a variable for my regular expression pattern. So I'm going to say pattern equals and then it will be a string. So I can take this and put this into a string. Now you'll notice straight away that there are some issues here. We get some red highlights largely around the slashes. And that's because regular expression needs to be escaped. So if we put an at symbol in front of the string, you'll see that it neatly escapes characters that require it. So then to actually use the regex to find the zip code. So I'm going to say uh, zip code match. So I'm going to create a new variable called zip code match. And that will be equal to regex. So we use the regex class dot match. And then this gives us some parameters that we can enter. So this method, as you can see here, uh, the IntelliSense is telling me that it will search the specified input string, so that will be the text that's being inputted, for the first occurrence of the specified regular expression. So the first match it gets will become the match. So if I say text is the input and pattern is the pattern that we want to use, that will go into this zip code match. And the type of this is just match. So this is the actual class and you can see it's part of system.text.regularExpressions. Just a bit of .NET context there for you. Then what we need to do next is say, did we find a match? Was it successful? So we can say, if zip code match, and then access the matches properties, and we can say success, which is a bool. We don't need to put anything else because we're just looking for true. Then we can say console.writeline, and then we want to return that to the user. So we can use some string interpolation. We can say your zip code, is and then that will be zip code match dot value and that will give us the string value for the match but obviously if we didn't find it then we want to say to the user that unfortunately the zip code could not be found so i'm going to run this and give it a go so now we've got a console window which says please enter text so i could enter something similar to what i put before i could say hey it's nick coming at ya from 90210 loving Beverly Hills, y'all. Your zip code is 90210. So we've used regular expression to detect a pattern in text and return that to the user. So let's step it up a notch. Let's start looking at another use case for regex. In this case, credit card masking. So for this use case, I want to look for a Visa credit card. And so I've taken a look online and paypalobjects.com has some test data that we can use. And this is quite common for APIs that use credit card integrations. They need that dummy data to be able to test. Uh, and uh, here, for example, we've got a test visa number. So I'm going to copy this and I'm going to go back into Regexer. And I found another regular expression for a visa credit card. So if I just dump some text in here and then randomly put in 
that number, you can see that in the middle of that, it's found that number. So similar to what we did for the zip code console app, I'm gonna create another console app which asks for a credit card number to be entered and then it will return the masked credit card number using what we call regex replace. So this is where we not only look for a pattern in text, but once we've got some matches, we replace some of the values within that match. So I'm just gonna get rid of that original console app and we're gonna start this with, please enter your credit card number. And then we can say that the credit card number text, because remember it's gonna be a string, is equal to console.readline. So we'll wait for the input from the user. Then one thing I'm gonna do here, which is not regex specific, but just a nice little use case for security. I'm gonna say that I don't want the user's credit card that's in plain text to remain on the screen. So I'll say console.clear at that point so that once they've submitted it, it's gone. It's not sitting there on the screen. I'm just gonna update this as well to say that I want some more information besides just the credit card number. Um, so please enter your name, credit card number, and um, let's say your date of birth just to show that what we're replacing is the actual credit card number so that you don't think that I'm just sending back a hard-coded mask, essentially. So we'll change this over to um, input string. We'll still clear the console, and then what I'm gonna do is say var treated text equals regex dot replace, and then we enter, just as before, our input string. So we want to use input string and then the pattern will be our pattern which I've forgotten to put in so let me go and grab that so we'll put var pattern equals and then an escaped string and then what we want to replace it with so I'm just going to put for now some crosses and there we go and then I'm going to say console.writeline treated text so I've got my pattern in there now and I've got my treated text, so I'm saying that I'm replacing it with the mask. So I'm gonna run this, uh, and then I'm going to, I think what I'll do is I'll write my response down first. So I've got that visa number, and I'll put in some date. It's not my actual birthday, but this is the text I'm gonna pass in. So I've got my name, my credit card number, and my date of birth. And what I'm expecting to happen is that I see the same thing, but in the middle, we have a masked credit card number. So if we fire this up, I'm gonna drop that in and you can see straight away it's come back with the results. So it cleared out the console and it just sent in the mask based on the regex replace. So it's very rudimentary. Most credit card maskers don't work in this way, but you can see essentially this is how we can make a start at detecting patterns and then transforming that data. I hope you found this useful. I can guarantee that you'll be working with regular expressions at some point in your career. So get good at them now. Don't expect to have to learn them off by heart. Don't be too hard on yourself if you are thinking, well, I should know this regular expression. I can guarantee most people are using something like regex or similar tools. But if you are using other tools, let me know in the comments below. And of course, do not forget to like and subscribe. Uh, I am approaching two and a half thousand subscribers, which is still pretty low in the grand scheme of things compared to other YouTubers. But for me, it's huge. And I'm so grateful to everybody. But I want to keep it going. So please do subscribe and um, join me next time for some more great .NET content.